Mitch, what did I tell you about the two films? He made only two films. His first two films. I know. But I didn't like the first one. What did you like about the second one? It was okay. I know, but what did you say? You said nobody. Yes, I did. But what you said about it, yeah, I think he what? needs to hear that. No, I don't believe he can do it. I want you Why to tell he him that? To hear that. Because what, he's he an artist. Can he, can he deliver the I, You know what? I'm going to cut to the chase. We like you. Nobody frames a shot like you, man. Our proposition? An exclusive contract. You shoot films for us. I usually wait 24 hours before I make my final decision on anything. So, 9.45 tomorrow, you gentlemen have my answer. Mr. Pelham? <laughs> You're an original. A real, what's that French word? Artur. The word is Artur. Hi, my name's Eric Pelham, and I'm a filmmaker. Action. You're probably wondering how this all works. It's very simple. I have contacts at every major studio who get me into the screening rooms at off hours. Once there, I can videotape the movie with no one looking. After I film my latest opus, I take the digital master home and I put it through my version of post. Then I give a master DVD to Lenny. Remember him? who copies and distributes DVDs and tapes to dealers the world over. There's so many middlemen between us and them, the law can't touch us. The beauty of it is, when I do my thing, <laughs> it's money for everybody, baby. New Tom Cruise screen at one a Thursday. Got you on the list. Come on, Lenny. I'm tired of shooting other people's films. When are we gonna shoot our picture? I told you. If we go DV, we could shoot next week. I still got the 50K we put aside, and I know we can get all the gear if we call on contacts. No, screw that. This is a film. It's not some, some pretentious dogma crap. It'll be like Cassavetti's, all family. You shoot and direct. I can't I'll believe this guy. Either. 10 years of working together, and he still doesn't get it. No, 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 trust no. me. No, listen, if we are going to make a film that people are going to see, we are going to need at least $2 million. Did you even get that script to Jack Burns' agent, huh? Mr. Producer? Hasn't returned my calls, but forget about Jack. We don't need him. Forget about... With Jack Burton in the picture, they will toss us the other $2 million. Mitch and Tony will pay top dollar for the new crews. A few more flicks for them, some backdoor distribution of our own, and you got your budget. The Inner Sanctuary. This is where I've been writing my true masterpiece, the movie that gives my life inspiration and meaning. <sighs> Through the Looking Glass, 120 pages of cinematic VSOP written for the great Jack Burton, formerly known as Jacob Einstein from Suffolk, New York. He's the only true genius left in cinema. Bottom line is this. Hollywood has become a wasteland so vast, it's become its own metaphor for the decay of contemporary culture. Some people say that video piracy is adding to the problem. I disagree. 
Video piracy has afforded me the ability to write a script that will help me return Hollywood back to its former glory. Through the looking glass, this is my homage to those true innovators of cinema. Those artistic warriors who gave their hearts and gave their minds and brought originality to film. And no matter what it takes, I am going to make this film. Eric! Oh, the other obscure object of my desire, Adrian. Hey, baby. What the fuck? Oh, God, that was horrible, wasn't it? What are you talking about? It just totally blew this audition. I had to hit the casting director as hard as I could, and he <laughs> said my rage wasn't believable. Was he right? Yes, he was. I'm kidding. I'm so kidding. Honey. This reminds me of when Adrian and I first met. I don't understand how you didn't like that. I thought that was amazing. A goddamn hate saw. You weren't touched by that? Existentialism is just mental masturbation. Well, at least that's a subject you know something about. You're walking home tonight. Watch this. Cinema's interior movement. Excuse me? Cinema's interior movement. You know who said that, right? No. Brisson. It was love, Redenbacher style. She appeared in some of the finest films Roger Corman ever produced. <gasps> my Lord. We were inseparable, tonic to my gin, yin to my yang, Jenna Rollins to my John Cassavetes. For the first time in my life, I had two loves. <gasps> I have a surprise for you. It's my favorite, can we? Yeah. <gasps> you dress up like the naughty nun and I'll be the mother superior. I know what you're thinking. Luckiest guy in the world, right? A guy like me and a girl like her. But can I tell you something? And uh, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. Maybe move each other. There you go, good. All I can think about is this film. This fucking film that no matter what happens, no matter what's going on, I have to make. I need lights. I need camera. I need action. I need through the looking glass, burned into every heart and every mind of every movie goer that's gonna lay down ten dollars to see a moving image. I need to make films. Fortunately, I have a plan. After reading about Jack's fondness for all things cinematic, I scored him this sweet little prize for his birthday. And let's just say, I think it'd be an offer he couldn't refuse. Alberto, a cinematographer classmate of mine, was working as the second, second, second AD on Jack's new project. I can get you in tomorrow, and you can give the gift to him yourself. <laughs> the missing reels of Von Stroheim's greed. A friend of mine who works customs at LAX confiscated them from Roger Ebert after he returned from some film festival in Finland. Excuse me. Yeah. Eric, it's Mitch. And Tony. Yeah, we were uh, just uh, wondering if you thought about our... Uh... Offer? Look, Mitch, Tony, sweethearts, guys, one day means just that. I'll give you my answer tomorrow. Look, we got a job for you uh, right now, today. You got two million bucks? Excuse me? You heard the number two and six zeros? <laughs> you know, you're crazy. You know what? Then get some kid out of AFI with some camcorder to do it, okay? Because right now I'm busy. You know, some people just don't understand the idea of destiny. To me, destiny is Charlie Theron's legs, Selma Hayek's tits, 
Hillary Clinton's brain, and Gwyneth Paltrow's sweet, sweet little ass. And today, yours truly has a date with her. Alberto gave me an eyeline that's within a gnat's pew of Jack Burton's cinematic magnetism. Wow. <laughs> These are from the original negative? Huh? Uh, the silver nitrate stock? There's, there's actually the, um, the original receipts from, from, from inside the lab. Sit down. Love, would you mind going out and getting me some Ethiopian for lunch? My pleasure, Cupcake. Jack Burton. Eric Pelham, sir. Mr. Burton, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of yours. I, I, I really appreciate you. You have a pitch, and I have another scene to shoot. Three minutes. You know I can't accept unsolicited material. Have your agent call. Have your lawyer get you. Two minutes. Through the Looking Glass is, 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 is the story about the... the What's the one thing that, that, that you love more than anything in the whole world? What, what, if someone, what if someone stole that thing away from you? How hard are you gonna fight to get that thing back? For me, Mr. Burton, it's the movies. The movies are where truths are told where we can be ourselves, you know? You laugh when you want to, you, you cry when you want to. You don't, you don't give a flying fuck who sees you. The movies, they're the church of the new millennium. I mean, don't you ever, don't you ever notice that the colors of the world only seem real when you see them up there on screen? Yeah. Yeah. This script is my skin, my blood, my bones, the heart that pumps it. And I now give it to you. Mr. Pelham, I will read your script. On that, you have my word. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Never send a mouse to do a lion's job.
Hey, Lenny, wh what are you doing here, bud? Alberto called me. You had a meeting with Jack Burton without me? Lenny, I... I give you a year to do something with that script. And I did it in one night. What do you mean by that? <laughs> to the math. Jack Burton, let me tell you. Jack Burton is too big for guys like us. Guys like us, we're better off as big fish in small ponds. In every teacher-student relationship, the student always outgrows the teacher. Lenny, get real. What do you mean, get real? You just don't get it, do you, kiddo? Lenny, it's over. You're over. We're over. You have become cruel. And you've become useless. Lenny, wait. L Lenny, 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 wait. Please Lenny. leave me alone. Hey. Have you, have you been here the whole time? I heard everything. How could you just dump Lenny like that? <sighs> Honey, it was time. For... It was time? You'd have nothing if it weren't for Lenny. Baby, Lenny's schmenny, okay? He's a dime a dozen. You're just like a dog, Eric. Anything you can't eat or fuck you piss on. Ex excuse me? Then what does that make you, huh? Screw you. Oh, come on, will you stop being so dramatic? Will you, will you stop, what are you doing? I mean, what, you're gonna leave now? You're gonna leave. You just don't get it. Adrian, would you wait? Come on, honey. Adrian, would you fucking wait? Don't you understand? Lenny would have loved you whether you made this film or not. I will love you whether you make this film or not. It's not enough. See you at the movies. Actors. <laughs> the rest of the year was brutal. Without Lenny, I found my distribution network had all but dried up. I could still shoot for local clients and a few schmucks who would still sell my wares on street corners, but being a completely independent filmmaker wasn't the dream come true I thought it would be. And I was running out of money, fast. Jack Burton, it seemed, was out of the country shooting his latest epic, all very hush-hush. Bottom line, I never heard back from him. And worse, I still didn't have the two million I needed to make my film. And then... Adrian. Mitch and Tony called. We've got a proposition for you. With bucks. Big bucks. How big? Lots of zeros big. It's a screening tonight. Very top secret. You go there, do your magic, deliver us the goods, and we'll give you two mil. What's the catch? The place will be crawling with security. Dangerous. That's not the catch. That's the fun. This was the opportunity I've been waiting for to try out my latest invention. Cool all of her peoples, right? Look a little closer. See it? It's got a camera right there. It's the smallest anamorphic lens available. <laughs> Hold on. The camera records a wireless signal that's sent to this hard drive that's sewn into the lining of my jacket. Burns the perfect DVD copy of everything I see. The hard drive is made up of a concentrated plastic that's about the size of a CD case.
no modern security system will ever be able to pick it up.